Last night's rain kind of spoiled the fun because we lost Marcus Stroman due to a postponement. Shane Bieber had to leave early due to a delay. And it was a bummer because we lost two legitimately very good pitchers to, you know, circumstances outside of their own control. I am happy to tell you that for today, we have no such concerns for MLB DFS because there are six games and not a single one has a weather note. So we're going to get to play things straight here, pick our favorite plays and dive on in and play whoever we think we should for tonight. I think we got a pretty good idea of who should do well. So let's dive on in and get you set for a Thursday slate of MLB DFS. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com here to break down Thursday's six game main slate with lots lock set for 6 40 p.m. Eastern for tonight. Again, 6 40 p.m. Eastern is the time for lock for tonight. Make sure you've got your lineups in by then uh, to play for this evening. Let's go to play an alternative slate as well, but 6 40 p.m. Eastern lock for the main slate. Like I said, no weather to note. It's glorious. We get to play the best plays, and I think we got some good ones. We'll talk about those in just a bit, but first, a quick reminder to make sure you are subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. Tomorrow, it's not just MLB. We also have UFC and NASCAR. We got a road course coming up this week, which should be a whole lot of fun. So make sure you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like what you hear, Leave us a rating and review as well. The MLB season is in full swing. You can play Body Armor's free-to-play pick'em contest with a $10,000 prize pool. Take a free swing at big cash prizes courtesy of Body Armor. Just answer questions predicting the rivalry match between uh, the Dodgers and the Giants. The more questions you get right, the more points you'll earn, and the more cash you could win. Get your picks in before first pitch tomorrow night at 10 to 15 p.m. Eastern. If you're chance to win a share of $10,000, you can sign up for free at fanduel.com slash free slash contest slash body armor edge. Again, that's fanduel.com slash free slash contest slash body armor edge. Make sure to play this free pick em contest for your chance to win a share of $10,000. Pitching preview for this Thursday main slate. Garrett Cole checks in as the highest salary pitcher on FanDuel. He's 10-8. A little low for what I would expect for Garrett Cole, given how good he is. Shohei Otani is $9,900. Max Fried is 98. Nick Pavetta, 91. Then we have Jordan Lyles. Steven Strasburg, welcome back. And JT Brubaker as the others at $8,000 or higher. I think Garrett Cole is in a tier of his own for tonight. I think that, honestly, even at 10-8, He's about $700 under salaried with where he should be. He is the top option, even with Shohei Otani being on the slate. I think it's Cole in a tier of his own. That's for a couple of reasons. The biggest one is length. The Yankees are letting Cole go as long as he wants. He's gone 102 or more pitches in four of his past six starts. He went 97 in the two exceptions in there. He's averaged 104 in that stretch. Nobody on this slate is touching that length for Garrett Cole. Plus, he's been disgusting while going deep in these games. He has been using his slider more across his past six starts. He has a 34% strikeout rate in that time with a 2.16 skill interactive ERA. His walk rate is 3%. When you combine that with how far he's going in games, good things are going to happen. Cole has nine plus strikeouts in five of those six starts. He has 10 plus three times, so he's been absurd. He's facing the Twins. They're getting healthier. Just got Carlos Correa back yesterday. So not as easy of a matchup as what Cole has had recently because they got a 120 WRC plus against righties. I'm just not sure it matters because he's a cyborg right now. The Twins are not a low strikeout team. It is 75 degrees in Minneapolis. So not enough, hot enough to be a concern. I think you lock in Cole in all formats, cash games, tournaments, single entry, I would just use Garrett Cole and go from there. He's undersalaried. He will probably be less popular than he should be. So Garrett Cole, to me, regardless of contest type, is the top option for tonight. If you do want to pivot, the top pivot is Shohei Otani. The season-long numbers for Otani, great. And in that perspective, he is in Garrett Cole's tier. But he's super inconsistent. And that's why I put him a full tier below Cole. He is still number two, though. I didn't see anything super concerning in the numbers in his most recent start for Otani. 
his velocity was fine. His pitch mix was fine. He just got rocked. Uh, and it was a tough spot because he was on the road against the Yankees. And that's a tough situation, a tough park to be in for a fly ball pitcher. But now he's back at home. Otani has a 2.61 skill interactive ERA this year with a 33% strike rate. And again, if we just look at those numbers, he is very much in Cole's tier, especially when he's at home and Cole is on the road. I just worry a bit about the inconsistency. He says in the Red Sox, they're a pretty low strikeout team, but Otani did strike them out 11 times in seven shutout innings back on May 5th. That's also long enough ago, over a month ago, where I don't worry about familiarity issues. So I do think Otani's a good pivot. Uh, I think that he should be much lower rostered than Cole tonight, and he still has the ability to be the SP1 of the night. I just think I am more inclined to swallow the chalk on Cole and make Otani my second highest exposure player for multi-entry. Like if I'm talking about like just these two exposure wise, 70, 30, 75, 25 in favor of Cole, probably where I'm thinking for tonight. I think that's the most appropriate number. And I could see myself using just these two. There are a couple guys I think are viable outside of them, but I think it's a heavy skew towards Cole with Otani being number two. For value plays, you have a couple routes you could go. I could see Jordan Lyles being fine against the Royals. Good matchup for him. Not a high strikeout situation, though. I could see Connor Pilkington. He's gotten a lot of whiffs. Facing the A's, not a bad matchup. But I'm going to cheat a bit. I'm going to put Nick Pavetta at the top here for values. He's 91. I typically try to go below 9,000. So cheating by $100. But my podcast, my rules. I just think that Pavetta is a much better play than Lyles and Pilkington, so I will go with him here. Pavetta does scare me. He lets up a lot of hard contact, uh, and he lets up fly balls. And the Angels, despite struggling, despite using Nickelback to try to break out of their slump, very weird, uh, they have some dangerous guys still. I just like the strikeout potential for Pavetta. Pavetta, similar to Cole, is going deep in games. He has gone 100-plus pitches in three of his past four starts, and he did do it against some lesser teams, but he also had eight strikeouts in nine innings of one run ball against the Astros. Overall this year, Pavetta has a 23% strikeout rate. The Angels as a team have a 26% strikeout rate against righties. That puts Pavetta's strikeout projection at 6.5. That is the third highest on the slate behind Cole and Otani. So yeah, I'm cheating uh, by plugging Pavetta here, but I just feel a lot better about him than the guys below 9,000. So Pavetta to me is the top value in quotes for tonight. I don't know if I'll get there. I think I might stick to just Cole and Otani. Uh, I'll talk about Max Fried and things to watch too, but it might be a two pitcher night for me tonight just because Cole and Otani really do separate from the pack. As far as stacking goes, it might be tough to stack the Yankees with Cole, but you can get there with the help of a value stack. And because, again, I think Cole is under salary. So I'd like to try to do that for today. I will rank the Yankees number one in terms of stacking. The Yankees are facing Dylan Bundy. Bundy did start the year off well, but all of his old issues have crept back up. Primarily, it's hard contact. Bundy's been trying to work in a sinker more across his past six starts, which is odd because he did this change after getting off to that impressive start. So it's not working. He has a 19% strikeout rate in this time, comes with a 41% fly ball rate and a 39% hard hit rate. The results have been pretty brutal. In those six starts, we've seen Bundy let up five plus earned runs three times. He let up four in another. That's even with two starts against Detroit and one against Oakland. The Yankees are much better than that. They, they lead the slate with a 123 WRC plus against righties on their current active roster with a 179 ISO, which ranks second. So it's not a good situation for Bundy. They're definitely a prime target here, even if it does require us to get more creative, whether it be with our second stack or within this Yankee stack to make things work. And I'm definitely willing to use some of the lower salary guys here in order to make it happen. Josh Donaldson is one. He's $2,900. Hasn't been great since he came off the IL, which is concerning given it's a shoulder injury, but he has made occasional loud contact at least. So he's in play. Uh, Matt Carpenter and Glaber Torres, if they play, if they manage to squeeze themselves into the lineup here, definitely would be in on them. And I'd rank them potentially above Donaldson as well. So if they play, plug them in. I just wouldn't go into the slate assuming that they'll play and you know having everything hinge on them because there's a good chance neither of them plays. Same kind of thing with Joey Gallo. He's not always fun, 
but I think he's probably necessary here potentially. So Gallo, Torres, Donaldson, Carpenter, all guys I'd be willing to use if it allows me to stack the Yankees with Garrett Cole. Again, the other route, though, is to potentially use a lower salary in second stack. One team I am willing to stack in order to make it easier to afford Garrett Cole is the Orioles. They're facing Chris Bubich. He will get the start for tonight, and he just came back up from AAA, and he had good strikeout numbers there, but the results were rough. He had a 6.59 ERA across three starts in AAA with a 9.33 ERA in the major so far this year. I am not a fan of using ERA in small samples, but the expected ERA in the majors for Bubich is 9.08. That's wild stuff. It's a combination of a low strikeout rate, a lot of walks, and a lot of hard contact. And it's not specific to just 2022 either. Bubich had a 4.73 skill interactive ERA last year as well. He just had more strikeouts and a bit less hard contact. Now that those two numbers have slid backwards, he's getting crushed. He did throw his changeup a bunch in his first start back in the majors, and he did hold Houston scoreless across five innings. So that's good, but it's not a good pitch. The X Woba against it is 457, according to Baseball Savant. And the Astros made a ton of hard contact in that game. Hits didn't fall in. They had 11 hard hit balls on 17 balls in play. I believe there were two barrels in there, too. So I am very on board of stacking the Orioles here in order to get me access to Garrett Cole as my pitcher and get me access to the Yankees as one of my stacks. One of the guys we should consider if he plays is Tyler Nevin. This got called back up from AAA. And last year, Nevin had a 229 ISO against lefties between AAA and the majors. He hit nine of his 17 home runs against lefties. So it seems like he could potentially be a lefty bashing specialist. I would not be shocked if we see Nevin bat seventh or so. He's $2,300. I would use him if he's in there because $2,300 can go a long way to getting back up to guys like Stanton, Judge, Rizzo, et cetera, et cetera, in your other stack. So Nevin's a guy I'd consider probably the, the prime guy I would go to uh, among the lower salaried Orioles, above Rutschman, stuff like that. So um, see if Nevin's in there, and if he is, I'd feel good about using him in this spot. For our third stack, Cleveland's offense has definitely cooled off. They are no longer stroking it like they were to start this year. But I do like their matchup tonight, and I'm willing to go at them in this spot. They're facing James Caprellian, who is in a pretty rough spot right now. He's let up four plus earned runs in three straight starts, and one was against Boston, which makes sense, but the others were against Texas and Seattle. He also let up four runs to the Guardians back on May 1st. The peripherals say we should expect this to continue because Caprellian has a 5.16 skill interactive VRA in seven starts. He has a low strikeout rate, lets up a lot of fly balls. The one thing keeping him from kind of going completely off the rails is the hard hit rate. It is 37% for the full season, but it was 42% last year. And it's been creeping up this year as the sample has expanded as well. We haven't seen Cleveland in many plus matchups recently. They do get one here. So I, I could think could see a spot where they bounce back to their early season form based on finally getting a good matchup where they can actually take advantage. So the, the, the Guardians, to me, a high-quality stack, and again, can help you a bit in getting to the Yankees with your second stack. Oscar Gonzalez is $2,400, great AAA numbers, batting in the middle of that order. I think he, he's a fantastic part of the stack. Josh Naylor's 31, uh, impressive bounce back for him this year after that injury that he had previously. 250 ISO against righties across 93 plate appearances. I'm willing to use Miles Straw for the stolen base upside. Uh, just a, another good route to help you splurge elsewhere. So Cleveland, I think, number two for me among value stacks behind the Orioles. Prefer the Orioles, then the Guardians, and then, you know, using guys like Donaldson, Torres, Carpenter, et cetera, et cetera, on the Yankees to make it work. So I think you can do it today. 10-8 is not bad for Cole. I would like to at least give it a swing to see if I can jam in Cole plus Yankees, and I think that I can. Let's go to things to watch. I do like Max Reed. He is a great pitcher. He's in a great matchup. He's not the highest strikeout guy. He has a 22% strikeout rate this year. The Pirates are at 24% against lefties, which does give him a boost. I would rank Freed straight up above Pavetta. The $700 between them does go a long way, uh, but I, I might still go Freed over Pavetta. I don't know. I think it's these four are the ones in my consideration set 
here. It's just those four. Otani, Cole, Freed, and Pavetta. And I might just stick to the top two. So Freed's an option for sure. If you really like him, go ahead. No objections here. But the lower strikeout rate is why he's not as high on my list here. I'm curious what Steven Strasburg will look like for tonight. Definitely not on my radar for DFS. I do think he stretched out. He went about 80-something pitches in his final rehab start. I've got him projected for 90 tonight. But just an 8.4% swing and strike rate in his one AAA start. It was higher in the two stints he had in AA, but both those were very short outings. We haven't seen Strasburg blow up since 2019, so I want to watch him. I've always had a soft spot for Strasburg. He's super fun to watch, but not there for DFS right now. So I want to see what he does. Just uh, wait and see for me on Strasburg right now. I'm not expo- not a- opposed to some exposure to the Nationals here. They're facing Trevor Rogers, who is really struggling this year for some reason. I loved him last year. He's very good, but hasn't had it recently. 5.28 expected ERA. There aren't many guys in the Nationals lineup I want to use against the lefty, but I think they're in play at least. So uh, consider the Nationals, but definitely would put them a tier below the Orioles and Guardians in terms of value to help you get to the other high salary guys on the slate. Let's finish up here with some dinger calls for this Thursday slate. The boring one, I'll go Anthony Rizzo facing off against Bundy, who traditionally has had issues with lefties. It's not a great park for left-handed power at target field, but Rizzo... Good power numbers this year. Puts the ball in the air a ton. So I'll go Anthony Rizzo as my homer pick for today. The fun one, we'll go Tyler Nevin. Mentioned it before uh, with the Orioles. I'd expect him to probably bat 7th, 8th, somewhere in there. I don't think they've faced a lefty since he came back up from AAA. So not really sure where he'll bat. It's, but it's possible. He does wind up batting higher in the order. But um, he's a guy who had some power last year in AAA. Had a good fly ball rate in AAA. Hasn't been as powerful so far this year. The fly ball rate hasn't been as high, but I think there's some power in there. So we'll go with Anthony Rizzo and Tyler Nevin as the home run picks for today. That is all that we have here for today on the solo shot. As I mentioned, though, tomorrow is a big day. We have MLB in the morning, as always. We have USC. We have NASCAR getting you set for a big weekend of DFS. So search for the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. If you like what you hear, Leave us a rating and review as well. If you have any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups for tonight. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to get you set for a fun weekend of DFS. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.